Starting off tonight with Little Brown Jug Brewing's Black Lager. They describe it as an unexpectedly light roast with malt flavored dark color herbal malt aroma. That herbal aroma just comes strictly from, I guess, the hops in the brewing process because it's just the standard five ingredients in there. Nothing weird or strange. So tonight I'm going to take a look at this little uh, macro keypad that I got in a mailbag a few weeks back. The reason I got this thing was hopefully to uh, program some of the shortcut keys for my editing software to hopefully speed up my editing, make it a little bit more efficient so I'm not hunting all over the keyboard for those shortcuts. First, I think I am going to take it apart and just see what it's based on. I mean, I know I could have done something very similar to this using... ESP32 or uh, the new Pipeco or even one of the old, uh, what are those, uh, Pro Mini, Pro Micro Arduino? But I noticed this thing uh, cheap on AliExpress, so I figured, what the hell, let's grab this and just see what it's going to look like. So there's four screws holding the acrylic case together here. And with those out, so we're going to take the smoke bottom off here. And what do we reveal? These are the little plugs for the cherry style keyboard switches that are on the front. If I wanted to, I could replace them with my own switches. Um, these type switches are available in several different styles and feels. Some of them are soft touch like these ones. Some of them have a harder or softer spring on them. Some of them have tactile feedback with a click at the bottom of them. Uh, just whatever you prefer, you could put in here. Or if I manage to wear one out, which is unlikely, but it could happen, I could replace them because they just plug right in. So underneath a couple of layers here, we have uh, some capacitors, the USB-C port, some fairly ugly soldering. That is the contacts for the rotary encoder. Yeah, I mean, by my standards of ugly soldering, that's kind of ugly. And you know, my soldering uh, is no screaming hell. So. so over here, we have a bunch of resistor positions that aren't populated. And two that are. I'm assuming those are just pull-ups, depending on how this thing is configured, I suppose. A few capacitors and a resistor over there. A couple more capacitors up there. And then... This little chip here, what are you? CH552. I'm going to guess that's a cousin of the CH340, maybe? Oh, it's not just a USB interface. I mean, it is USB, but it is, in fact, a full-on microcontroller. I did not expect that. I guess I kind of did because you'd need a microcontroller in here, but I didn't expect that to be what its name was. So it's got 16K of built-in program memory. That's interesting. It's got an ADC. It can do SPI. It can, of course, do USB, uh, including USB-C um, negotiation. It has a UART, four channels of A to D, six channels of capacitive touch, up to 17 GPIO pins. But wait. It's a SOP 16. How does it have 17 GPIO? I guess maybe that's 17 GPIO uh, software ports internally, and then you just assign them to whichever pins are available. I guess. I'm not a low-level microcontroller programmer, or high-level for that matter. So there it is showing the pinout, and I'm assuming the ones that are not assigned to fix things uh, can be assigned to any of the internal GPIO ports. So I'm guessing that's probably what's going on with our six push buttons, uh, rotary encoder, and what else we got in there? Nothing else, actually. Okay. I'll just continue taking knobs and buttons off, and I've got the screws off. So let's see what's on the other side of this board. Not much, just provisions for LEDs that are not populated because, of course, I bought the lowest end version of this thing. Um, just looking at the tracks for the LEDs, see this one from that corner, daisy chain to there, that to there, 
that to there, these are addressable LEDs. So it only needs one GPIO port for all of the LEDs, and they can be RGB, whatever you want. If, you know, we had them, but this version doesn't. Fairly clean board, actually, all things considered. Nice and solid, too. I don't have an IDE to program that uh, CH552 chip, and even if I did, I wouldn't know what to program it with. So I am going to have to go and look up the programming tools, which there was a link on the AliExpress page that I bought this from, so it shouldn't be that hard to find, hopefully. Um, I'm going to guess that they are Windows only programs, so I may have to do a little bit of uh, screwing around to make that work. Because normally, as I'm sure any regulars know, all my computers around here are running Linux. So I'm going to have to figure out something if, those, uh, if the program for this thing is Windows only. And I'm pretty sure I remember that it is from, from when I did the mailbag. So just give me a few minutes to put this back together and do some more hunting. So here's the listing on AliExpress where I picked this thing up. They had quite a variety of them. This was sort of uh, one of the cheapest, not the absolutely cheapest. I think, yeah, that's the cheapest one, one knob and three buttons. And the most expensive one, I think, is, yeah, that one. We got uh, 15 buttons and three knobs. But I didn't think I would need something that crazy. I just settled for something like that. Regardless, down here there are links to various different bits of software. But anyway, I've downloaded all these and they are in fact all for Windows. So I'm going to have to uh, borrow one of the kids' uh, school laptops. Since we're downloading them from Google Drive, they do a pretty good job of uh, virus scanning. I'm going to do my own virus scans anyways and just make sure everything is uh, above board here and... We'll be back in a moment with the software. A couple other things we can do, I guess, well, before we go into Windows mode, is to look at it here, plugged into my Linux computer, and there is how it shows up, which is, I guess you can uh, program the USB port to report itself as whatever you want. This is definitely not an Acer device. And something that we observed uh, when I popped this open in the mailbag, right now it's programmed so that every button just puts out a C, including rolling the encoder. So hopefully we can reprogram this with uh, one of these pieces of software. So here's all the software that I downloaded from all those various different places. And there is a manual here. There's actually a couple of manuals. Uh, this this one up here is in Korean, so I had Google translate it for me. Again, it is a machine translation, but hopefully it shows something interesting. Um, this looks like it's for one that's got a few more keys. Oh, and it's also got a blue tooth on it. And it's got the LEDs in it, so this may not be the right one. So we have this program here, which looks like it connects to the thing you select which key you want to program you punch in what you want it to do and you click the download button i guess not sure what this layers is that may not be an option mine uh, mine does either oh okay it looks like this will work for one of the smaller ones as well right so here we have the same directory of software that we saw before. I've unzipped any of the zip files and rescanned them again and no viruses. So that's good. I probably should plug this guy in just so that the software recognizes it when it boots up. Hey, Windows recognized it as something. That's a good sign. Let's see what this software here is. Mini keyboard, that's the one that showed on the website, right? Let's try that. Okay, device disconnect. Read device. Yeah, that one doesn't seem to work. This does seem to be the one uh, for the hardware with lots of buttons and knobs on it. So let's try something else. 
what's the date on here? 2023, 0303, 2023-0714. Let's try the newest one. Mini Keyboard EXE. Same program name. Oh, but that looks different. Hey, it's connected. So let's program something there. Okay. Uh, let's make it say key one. And let's make key two say K2. Did it keep that? No, it erases each one. Okay, so I have to download each one each time. K1. Download. Succeeded. Key 2. Let's call that K2, I guess, just for now. Download. Uh, left, center, right. I think that's the knobs. So let's make the spinning the knob to the left say L. Let's make the knob spinning to the right say R. This is tedious. I wish you could click them all at once. And let's center. I guess that's click. So let's uh, uh, see how I see K and download that. So let's see what happens in Notepad if we push some buttons. Button 1 says K1. Button 2 says K2. Button 3 still says C. Turn the knob to the left, I get an L. Turn the knob to the right, I get an R. And I get a click when I click the button. Well, that's pretty cool. Now then, let's try that with the Linux computer. So left button, K1, yeah. K2, that works. Spin left, spin right, click. I think that is going to serve my purposes for my editing computer quite nicely. Um, now I just have to go in and um, make note of the the macro keys that I use the most often, program them on there, and probably uh, put physical labels on the keys, at least until I learn what they are um, and what position they're in, which shouldn't take too long. This guy, obviously, I'm going to make a scrub wheel. Um, click, I'm not sure. And I'm, I expect that I'm going to have this on my left hand and the mouse on my right hand. And hopefully I won't ever have to touch the keyboard at all. And once I learn these, then I won't have to go, you know, hunting around the real keyboard to, to find what I need for editing. Well, that's good. I think that's 20 bucks well spent or well, 17 or whatever it was. Um, the AliExpress link... The link to all the software pages and everything else is going to be down below. In case you've got one of these, in case uh, you want to figure it out. Um, I don't know. Uh, do you have one? Or something similar, something compatible, something completely different to do the same job? Um, let me know down in the questions and comments as, you know, as usual down there. It's YouTube. You know how YouTube works. Um, anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll talk to you later.